Land of Plenty, Wendy and Lucy, uh, The Station Agent, Meeks Cutoff, Shutter Island, so many great, great movies. She's nominated for an Oscar for a British Academy Award, as is Kenneth Branagh next week, and many others uh, this year. Please welcome the incomparable Michelle Williams. Congratulations to you both. This is, uh, it's really an extraordinary movie, and it's so great to see the reaction that you get, get to it now. But, you know, I have to, it had to have been an incredible challenge, I have to say, to take on such an icon like Marilyn Monroe. And, um, you know, what you did, though, was show all those different sides of her. You know, it, it was such a multifaceted performance. Did you have any trepidation about going into this? Or, you know, did you say, what, you're crazy? I'm not going to do this. <laughs> I was, a, I was a, a thrilling and terrifying mixture of so many things at that moment. Uh, the easy part for me always is, is um, deciding what to do. Uh, um, reading a script, e either you have that sort of instant connection from somewhere in here to somewhere out there, and everything inside of you says yes. That's the easy part, and then the hard part is figuring out how you're going to do it, um, <laughs> and if you're up for doing it, and if you're really the right person, you know, to sort of to quiet all those voices, all those fears. So, so sure. Uh, um, I, I I knew that what I needed and wanted more than anything else was time, um, and I and I asked for it. And um, luckily, Simon Curtis, the director, gave it to me. I think we were supposed to start earlier in the year. And I said, I want as much time as possible. Please push it as late as you can possibly go. And he said, OK, but you know, you do have to get into the Thames. So <laughs> it can't be, you're not ice skating. It can't be frozen. So you, you, you're going to have, I'm not going to kill you either. So it has to be within a reasonable time. So um, yeah, I wanted, I, all I wanted was, was time. What was so extraordinary to me was the physique, Norma Jean, as it were. It's a pretty remarkable thing to see. When I first started watching her movies, I couldn't see how she was doing what she was doing. In fact, I couldn't see that she was doing anything at all. I just thought she was. Um, <laughs> and and that was those were almost the most terrifying moments of, I, I don't see how this thing is, how will I ever be that? And then you watch the movies over and over again, and you watch them sort of genesis um, of, of her performance, of her creation, of her Marilyn Monroe, and you start to see how the thing is made. And so it starts to break down in front of your eyes, which actually in a way is kind of sad because um, it takes away some of the magic. Um, but for me, very helpful because I can see her building it and so I can get an idea of how I can build it. And also, most importantly, to understand that it was built. <laughs> she made that. That wasn't her. It wasn't just sort of. Um, uh, it, it wasn't her. It wasn't her. It wasn't who she naturally, genuinely was. It was um, the product of her imagination, her work, her study, and her her desire to be somebody. Her desire to be seen. Um, yeah. I've never seen her portrayed. You know, on those different levels before on screen, I, we've all we've seen different people try to do. The, you know, he was such a yeah, cause just you know, I, people, anybody who ever did anything that he did, and he did so much that many people ended up following in, in footsteps. That's the generation of Richard Burton, and Peter O'Toole, the generation of Anthony Hopkins and Ian McKellen, and uh, it, you know, you he was such a sort of um, uh, sort of touchstone for. for for what was uh, a, a kind of standard to to uh, aspire to, that you always end up looking coming up pretty short, you know, in terms of in terms of what he delivered. But when this came along, it was hard not to just be excited to be to go back and look at that work again. It's remarkable. He's just he's a very very fine artist and remarkable. And so it's like going back to acting college just to look at what he did and learn from it again. So that was a free gift yeah. to start with. So once again. You could say thank you. And in a way, beyond the privilege of being asked to do it, and I did feel a keen sense of privilege and, and, and an honor, uh, was, the, um, was just in a way the, 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 the sort of chance to, to say thank you very much for a great 
debt of, of, of gratitude that we, we owe him, including, and he was candid about that experience of filming with Marilyn, you know, presenting him in ways that he speaks about in his book. He was immensely frustrated. He did get angry. He did have a sense of him being, himself being, to some extent, at various times, you know, an absurd figure in his own estimation. People are funny sometimes when they take what they do so seriously. We do, and we don't realize it's quite so funny from the outside, but Colin Clark in this picture does that. But Olivier wrote about it candidly and really after the sort of intimidation factor of, well, how can anybody play it or think they could play it? It was, it was Olivier's own writings about it and his own honesty about it that made me feel that it was, he might perhaps approve of somebody trying to, trying to do it. Um, and, and then the opportunity to just be around the, the, his level of artistry and try and aspire to it, particularly in relation to him and her, was, was, was something that, uh, took you beyond beyond the fear and dread <laughs> that you had originally, and into you know a world of, from a creative point of view, great excitement. Yeah, and you. It was something like, whenever those experiences happen to me, I guess you would call it synchronicity or something. It makes me feel like I'm in the right place at the right time, like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And isn't that so hard to know if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing? Um, and I felt, I felt. I mean, there were so many sort of instances, you know, the Parkside House where we shot um, was the actual Parkside House that they stayed in, the stairs, the bed, the kitchen, the wall, you know, everything. It's sort of, uh, and I think that you can give places like that meaning when you're, when you're working and you're, and you're constantly, you're in a state of, of searching and your eyes feel like they're a little bit more open and all your senses are kind of a little prickly. So things like that, it, for me, it took on it took on it, it took on a lot of meaning. You know, I saw I was at the um, Palm Springs Festival when you observed, and then your Golden Globe speech as well. You know, she never got she did get a Golden Globe, but she's never received an Oscar nomination, and you have playing her. So that's that's. I owe it to her. She wrote a pretty great part. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be something. That's got to be like some kind of mind bender. Gosh, when you put it like that, it really is. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I mean, I think, you know, it's something that we shared. That since I was, since I was, since I started doing this, I don't know for what reason all I ever wanted was to be taken seriously as an actress. And then, you know, in reading um, books about her and reading everything that she said, and then I come across these words, all I, all I want is to be taken seriously as an artist. <gasps> oh, I know you. Wow. <laughs> All right, I've got. I, I know what that feels like. So, um, I, and to to have a sense of validation. I mean, she had a very she had a very tough, and um, I think that that to have felt accepted, loved, admired, embraced um, by her peers would have would have made up for things that she lacked when she was a child. So she was always looking for for ways for people for things to fill holes to fill gaps inside of herself and. Um, and that was that was a big one. I mean, she had adoration, but she didn't. There was something that she was missing—a kind of sort of esteem or respect, which I think she was very much hoping to get from Olivier. Um, <laughs> but what do you what do you think about that? Do you think uh, Marilyn Monroe was underrated as an actress? I mean, I, I can name three or four movies where I think she was sensational, and you know, just bus stop and some like a yeah. thought. Yeah. I, yes, I, well, maybe not this end of things. I think uh, my sense in uh, in working on it was was that maybe nowadays people do understand that this this thing that actually Olivia experienced, which was to be sort of bedazzled by the apparently effortless qualities of, of Marilyn, that she's it was as if, and partly it was the nature of her public appeal. People liked her, they felt they knew her because she was unaffected, she was natural, she was direct, and yet, as Michelle says, the, the sort of persona that is the sort of careless, effervescent, you know, light comedienne, the <laughs> bubbling, sort of uh, innocent and yet jolly and kind of um, direct individual was the product of a lot of artistry, to be honest. But, but I, I think for, specifically in Prince and the Showgirl, where Olivier concedes that she she's much finer, I think, in the film than he is. He had a year's full of experience of playing the role in the theatre, but I think maybe that was a weakness, and he brought some of 
what he might have expected to be effects that worked on the stage to the film, and maybe they didn't. But Marilyn was still having to play a, a heightened style. I mean, it wasn't a naturalistic drama, The Prince and the Showgirl, but nevertheless, she, and this is an example of artistry, she finds the style, and then she disguises it and makes it natural. So that, and that, it's, so that is both the achievement of a technically very able actress, that, that isn't just falling off a log, that's, that's technique, and then it's the art that hides the art. And whether that was intuitive, it can't just have been intuitive. She, she worked at it. And you might say that maybe it was a narrow range that we saw because of the, or a relatively narrow range because of the nature of the part she played. But one had the sense with that degree of accuracy and spontaneity, invisible kind of naturalism, that had she been with us for longer and, and had a chance to play other kinds of roles, I think that that kind of high, high level of skill that I think Olivier was, was awed by um, would maybe have, have made itself felt in, 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 in parts that might have been more obviously dramatic or, or, or got the kind of attention and, and uh, awards consideration that maybe she, she, she lacked. Yeah, and you mentioned that... Needed, well, metaphorically, um, something, somebody to hang on to. And that it, and that she was always, I noticed, she was always sort of touching her own body, she was always sort of referencing her own body because it feels good, and it also feels really good to touch somebody else's body. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> um, so that that was. I'm, I'm 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 delighted that you saw that. I'm delighted that 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 made it that that idea made it out there to you. So um, uh, yeah, I thought of her. You know, in her sort of in those moments, she she gives so much pleasure. Sometimes just watching her in a movie, you get so much pleasure, and she's. And I and I and I um uh oh I already said it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, right here in front. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say you. Actors, do you have tips or techniques that you use to overcome fear when you're acting? Uh, she's talking about the characters you play and and you yourself overcoming fear. In Ken, do you have to overcome fear in your? You bet. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, the simple thing, e easy to say, hard to do, is just breathe. Wherever you are, just breathe. It's amazing how just a slow breath, whether it's in the wings, you know. I remember uh, back to playing Hamlet, and I was doing it on stage, it was a press night, and I got very nervous, and I thought the first time, I don't want to be too graphic, but I thought I was going to throw up, and I was, I was so, <laughs> so, no, literally about to go on, and just... And I literally was at a point where if I, if it continues to be this difficult and this terrifying, what on earth am I doing this job for? And so I did breathe and I went on and I was still terrified. And I remember that I paraphrased the first part of whatever I had to say. And I remember, uh, I remember that I'd been in a room that day with somebody who'd been smoking cigarettes that were called Dunhill. And in, and in the first part of the first soliloquy that Hamlet says, he says, uh, at least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. And I remember saying, at least I'm sure it may be so with Dunhill. <laughs> And this was, it was a press night, national press were there, and I was waiting for people to stand up and say, this is rubbish, this is rubbish. and nobody did, and I thought, you know, excuse my language, fuck it. So, I just, listen, listen, nobody died, I, I made a mistake, I made a few mistakes, and you know, we just got on, I kept breathing, and it's all okay. So it's okay to be frightened, and it's okay to go through the fear, and just keep walking. been thinking during Marilyn um, because there were <clears throat> there were day there were days there were there were moments every day um, where I was so afraid and what I what I told myself over and over again was okay the worst that can happen is that you make a fool of yourself oh, <coughs> that. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will do that. I will play that role over and over again. I will I will take the risk and I will be willing to play the fool because because it's really not because like you said, like nobody died. It's just a mistake. It's 
Um, you, and I'm also very comfortable with the fact that if you have, if you're lucky enough to have a long career, it's gonna go like this. <laughs> and so maybe this is gonna be my mistake. And I know how much I've learned from from other mistakes that I've made, or the times that I've failed, or the times that I've fallen short of my mark. I know, and I know like where I need to get better. And so maybe this is one of those times. And what I really need then is the courage and the bravery to pick myself up and dust myself off and say it wasn't so great, but I got something else to say, and I'm going to go back out there and try and say it. Well, I'm going to tell you, this was...